The pie dough recipe that we're going to make today is very straightforward and very simple. It's one pound of either all-purpose flour or pastry flour. It's three quarters of an ounce of sugar, a quarter of an ounce of salt, ten ounces of shortening, this is vegetable shortening, and five ounces of ice water, ice cold water. So, how do we do this? We're going to be doing this with the biscuit method. So we're going to take the dry ingredients, the flour, the salt, and the sugar, and we're going to mix this together. You can push this through a sifter, or as I'm doing here, you can use a whisk to make sure that the salt and the sugar and the flour are evenly put together. The next step in the biscuit method is to cut in the fat. Now today I'm using all-purpose vegetable shortening. Uh, it is cold. You want to use cold fat when you're making uh, either pie dough with the biscuit method or biscuits with the biscuit method. The reason for that is flake. Okay, we all know about flaky biscuits, we all know about flaky pie dough. Fat is what contributes the flake, and the colder the fat, the more it will stay in pieces, visible pieces in the dough, and that is going to create more flake. Uh, also, the other idea behind flake is that the more you knead the dough, the more you break down the fat, the less flake you're going to get. And as you know from the uh, chapter on pie dough that I sent to you. There are two basic types of pie dough, flaky and mealy. Today we're going to make something right in between. Uh, you'll be able to see the pieces of fat in the finished dough and that's going to give us some nice flake in the product. So how do we do this? We cut in the fat. We take the fat and we want to break it into pieces about this big. That's a little bit smaller than a walnut and the size of the fat that you're going to use, of course, depends on the quantity of dough you're using, you're making. So if you're making a large quantity of pie dough, you would obviously break the fat down into bigger pieces. Let's get all of that in. Uh, you can make pie dough with, well, before I go on about uh, the different types of fat, what I'm doing now is breaking the fat and the flour together. This is called cutting in the fat. You can do it with a variety of tools. There are pastry cutters. Uh, you can do it by hand. I prefer to do it by hand. And you can also use a mixer with a paddle attachment. The, uh, the trouble with a mixer is that uh, mixers are very powerful. And even just a couple of extra turns of that paddle can over mix this dough and cut the fat in too much. Uh, you're going to get to the point where we are very soon going to have to add in that five ounces of water. And if you break the fat and the flour down too much, it will turn into a paste. At that point, it becomes very difficult to get the water into the flour and fat. And you might think you don't have to because the dough has come together, but you do have to get that water in. So don't over break down the flour and the fat. And mixers have a tendency to do that. Like I said, even a couple of extra turns of the paddle can overcut the fat into the flour. Now, as far as fats go, you can use vegetable shortening, you can use butter, you can use lard. Oh my god, did he just say lard? Huh. Lard has such a bad reputation. But when it comes to things like biscuits and pie dough, Lard has some very nice advantages. First of all, it has a crystalline structure that adds to flake. It has a very unique flavor that adds to the product. And for people who think that lard is one of the most unhealthy fats out there, consider that there's about half as much saturated fat in lard as there is in butter. And both fats have about the same amount of cholesterol. So. Let's not look too much askance at lard. All right, so I've broken down the flour and the fat. The, uh, the pieces of flour and fat, the uh, clods of fat, of fat uh, look like big peas. And again, the bigger the clods of fat, the more flake you're going to get. And this is right around in the middle. This is very nice. I hope you can see that. So. We have sifted the dry ingredients, we've cut the fat into the flour, and now it's time to add the five ounces of ice water. 
Again, ice water keeps the fat from melting. And again, the more the fat melts, the less flake you're going to get. So now we're just going to mix this around. And as you know, this is the biscuit method. We're not going to over mix it in the bowl by hand because I'm going to turn this out onto my board here, my countertop, and then we're going to finish mixing it on the counter. Okay, so let's begin the process of bringing this together. You may need to have some extra flour on hand. Not a problem. I always dust with bread flour. Again, the reason is I'm not interested in adding flour to the product I'm making, whatever that product happens to be. I'm just interested in creating a non-stick situation. So some people will tell you if you're working with all-purpose flour, dust with all-purpose flour, pastry flour, whatever it happens to be. I always dust with bread flour. Uh, again, it is the least clumping flour. It's very fine. And if all you're interested in doing is creating a non-stick situation, it works perfectly. Now, this dough is still pretty cool to the touch. It does get a little sticky on your hands, but nothing a bench or a bowl scraper will take care of. So here's my bowl of bread flour. You can start with bigger clods of fat because, as you can see, this kneading process helps break down some of that fat. Now, we're just about done. We have a nice uniform dough. Uh, I am, as you can see, shaping it into a cylinder. And I'm going to roll this out just a little bit longer because if we were to make pie shells from this, pie shells should be nice and round, okay? So, in my world, if you want to end up with a circle, you start with a circle. And by rolling the dough into a log like this, there we go, beautiful. By rolling the dough into a log like this, if I want to portion out dough for a pie shell, all I have to do is, whatever the weight I want, cut this off, I'll have a hockey puck of dough, and that's going to be very easy to roll out into a circle. As opposed to having a mountain or a blob or an anthill of dough that I will have to chisel off to get the proper weight, mash it all together, press it down, roll it out. By that time, I've overworked the dough, probably broken down the fat so small that I won't get the flake I'm looking for. So, for ease of future use, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna roll it into a log like this. Now we wanna let the dough chill, let that fat solidify. Let the gluten relax. So, with some plastic wrap. So now that the pie dough is rolled into a log, we want to take it, wrap it in plastic, nice and snug. And refrigerate. 
This will allow the dough to firm up, let that fat solidify, and importantly, it will allow the gluten to relax because cold relaxes gluten. One time the recipe makes 33 ounces of dough and when we start to talk about pies and pie shells, uh, the standard 9 inch pie tin, standard depth by the way, 9 inches across, takes about 10 ounces of pie dough for a bottom and approximately the same amount of dough for the top. So from one time the recipe you'll get three what we call pie skins. And there you have it, pie dough, biscuit method.